Why are you poor? Because you're focused on the wrong thing. That's today's show. Let's dive into it. Hey everyone, I'm Clayton Morris, longtime real estate investor, and this is the show where we talk about building passive income, financial freedom, and we want to create financial intelligence. Our mission with this show is to give you the power to change your family, to change your community, to change your overall paradigm, to use a cliche, right? It's in order to talk to your friends and family and neighbors and say, look, this is not the way to build wealth. The way that we've been doing it is all wrong. So today's episode is really focused around the idea of why people are poor. Why are people stuck in the middle class mentality? Because it is a mental, it is a mental place. It is a mental space. Now, yes, you can argue, and certainly this is the case, that we are not all dealt the right cards or the same cards at childbirth, right? We don't all come from the same place. Many people have a leg up in this world beyond other people, without a doubt. But do you want to change that? If you want to change that, then there's one key area that we need to start paying attention to, and that's the power of the financial statement. And what do I mean by that? It's the balance sheet. Poor people don't know what that is. Middle class people don't know what that is. Poor and middle class people do not know what a financial statement is. Poor people, and I, dare I say middle class people, focus on one thing. One thing. Income. So they go to work every week. Uh, they look at their 40 hours a week. They see their statement that they get on their paycheck. And I've been there, you know, hands up. I've been there, right? I've seen the people standing at the line at the payroll counter to get their paycheck because, oh my gosh, this is what I need. I need this, right? I need this fix. I need this payroll. And they rip it open and they look at that. They, they look right at that one number. They don't pay attention to the other things. They're just looking for that income. That's all they care about. Just the income working for somebody else. So they're only focused on income. And if you're working for somebody else, that's it. But if you're self-employed, now think of, I, I use this example and it kind of goes back to Michael Gerber's e-myth, right? He, he used the example in his great, great book years ago about the bake shop, the baker, right? The woman who loves baking so much, she opens a bakery, but she's there working all day, every day. And therefore she's not truly an entrepreneur because she's fully in her own business. She has no one else working for her. Or if she does and that person quits, guess who's back to doing it all again? It's, it's the woman who owns the bake shop. So she is in this bakery all day and she's only focused on her income, how many baked goods, how many scones did she sell and how much is she spending for expenses? Now she's nearly as bad as the person who's working for somebody else. She's nearly as bad as the person who is just making income and standing in line at the payroll counter at Walmart or at Sam's Club waiting for that paycheck once a week. Now, I've been there. I spent my formative years working for somebody else. My first job was at McDonald's. I had a paper route. I worked all over this country working for other people. I worked for BJ's Wholesaling Club. Do you know what that is? It's like Sam's Club, but on the I guess on the East Coast. Um, God, I've worked, you know, I, I was a waiter. I was a, a host at an olive garden. So I've been there. I've worked for other people. And I know that when you know that you're like, okay, the direct deposit is coming in on Thursday afternoon and you log in your bank account to see if it's there. You don't think about anything else. Now, rich people focus on their balance sheets and their financial statements. So we had that employed person we had the self-employed bakery owner who's just focused on how many scones she sold minus how much it costs for her to keep the lights on at the bakery and how much it costs for her to order paper plates in order to give out to the customers, income expenses. But what rich people understand and the reason that they care more about their balance sheets than income or anything else is because they're buying performing assets. And those assets are producing cash flow. And those are the two most important words in the English language, cash flow. So the cash coming in and the flow 
going back into the performing assets, not out to a bank, not out to taxes, out to keeping the lights on inside your company. By having those performing assets on a balance sheet, and you can look down the column and see, okay, what are my performing assets and what are my liabilities? Do I have a car payment? But do I also have three rental properties producing uh, $3,200 a month in cash flow that by far and away cover my car payment? That is financial intelligence. That is why people are poor because they're focused on the wrong thing. They're looking at the income and they're looking at the expenses. They're not looking at the performing assets and how to make sure that all of my expenses in my life are covered by the cash flow coming in from my performing assets. If there is any other story that you follow in your life, I, I don't know what it would be beyond this for building financial freedom. This to me, write this down, rewatch this video, share it with your friends, because I believe that this is the number one way to start thinking about wealth as a rich person. Wealthy people don't care about, uh, they don't care about the income. In fact, they sort of see cash, cash on hand as kind of a pain in the butt, quite honestly, because now they're gonna have to pay taxes on it. They want performing assets that build net worth. So when they're looking at that financial statement, they're seeing, oh, I own $500,000 of real estate, free and clear with no debt on it. That is my net worth based on these assets. That is my net worth. That is what rich people look at. They're focused on that number and the cash flow that's coming in every month over their expenses. I hope you found this useful. I hope you will subscribe to the channel if you're not already a member. We have tons of great content here to help you build financial intelligence. And if you haven't yet downloaded it, you have to. You have to download our free financial freedom cheat sheet. It's right there. It's so simple. Just click on the link and you can download it. It's three pages long. You'll sit down and it'll go through and teach you your, in, your, your expenses, what those expenses look like in your life, and then how to reverse engineer it with passive income, cash flow. This is the key to success, my friends. This is the key to financial freedom. And make sure you're getting your advice from people who are wealthy. If you're getting your advice from people who don't know what they're talking about, who have not achieved financial freedom, who don't have enough monthly income coming in every month from passive income that they can put food on the table and walk away from their nine to five job, then you need to ignore those people. Unless they're wealthy and unless they've hit financial freedom, you should ignore their advice. We'll see you next time, everyone here on the show. Thank you so much for subscribing. Now go out there, take action and become a real estate investor. Build that passive income. We'll see you next time.